All right, today I'm just going to do a little bit of English geometria. And geometria is um, the way in which uh, the Hebrew, Greek, and English, and other alphabets as well, were put together with number encoding. So um, here's our basic cipher. Um, basically, you divide the 26 letters of the alphabet in half, so A through M, N through Z. That's 13 and 13. And it's actually based on the story of creation. So uh, it is said that God made the universe in six days. And then on the seventh day, he rested. And so the cipher is based on that, that idea or concept. And then after the seventh day, we just walk back down. Six, five, four, three, two, one. It's a pretty simple system. But I'm just going to show you today... Um, just something basic about uh, the holy number seven. Uh, seven is one of the building blocks of the universe. You'll see three, four, seven, and twelve all over the place. Um, the seven, uh, the septenary is called the seven, and um, the twelve uh, go throughout all these ancient mythologies from the twelve apostles, which are actually the twelve posts of the zodiac or the Maseroth. Um, through many other ancient ancient stories, through the Iliad with Homer, through uh, ancient Egypt and um, Greece. Um, the Torah is actually based on this cipher as well, the 22, al uh, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, is based on the Torah or the wheel. Um, so now I'm just going to talk to you about the holy number seven very briefly too, there's a lot that goes on with seven, but this is just something very simple. The way in which uh, this, this cipher works with seven is um, you basically write out the word seven in letters. So S, E, V, E, N. Um, and just a little side note, if you were to take away this S, you have even, um, which is where we get the word Eve from Adam and Eve. We get 11, even, evening. Um, we get a lot of words that refer to the feminine energy of, of Adam and Eve in our English alphabet. So back to seven. Uh, you just look here correspondingly below seven would be six, or I'm sorry, below S would be six, so that would be its numerical value. Um, e would be five, and we'll put five here as well. V uh, would be 5 as well, and N is 1. If you just add all these numbers up, you'll get 22. Um, again, back to that Hebrew alphabet, that, that Torah number, 22 is also a very significant number. But why is 22 significant when you add it up using the letters of 7? Well, now that we have 22, if you just divide... 22 by 7 itself, we get the transcendental number of pi, 3.14. Pretty amazing. At least I think it's pretty amazing. Um, this mathematical equation comes into many things. Uh, primarily comes into the vesica Pisces, which I'll be doing more videos on, which is the splitting of pi. Um, seven comes into that and the building blocks of our very first letter of our alphabet the a or the alpha and then here's just a couple of other things um, about seven that are pretty pretty well known uh, we have seven visible planets which actually actually correspond to our seven chakras um, we have seven colors in the the rainbow in which the human eye can see of the light spectrum. Um, we actually have seven notes in an octave. Um, the word octave actually means eight, but the first note is the beginning uh, and the last note is the end. So it's, it is an, an eight, an eight step process to be in an octave, but there's seven notes in an octave. Um, famously heard of the seven sisters, uh, which refers to all kinds of um, uh, constellations, primarily the Pleiades. And then there's also many sacred 
cities around the world that have built their cities um, on seven hills or seven mounts, primarily Rome. Uh, and Rome used to be called Saturnia before it was called Rome because they, um, they basically worshipped Saturn, again referring to the planets. So seven is a significant number and seven encodes pi. And so real quick, I'll just go, go on a side note here um, and show you just a basic picture of the seven chakras as, um, as they correspond to, I don't know if you can see that, the seven chakras. These are nerve ganglia that are in the human body and notice that there are seven of them. And each one of these nerve ganglia is in the same places as where our spiritual centers or energy centers called chakras would be. And um, those chakras have wheels on them, or they're actually made up of wheels that spin light or energy up and down our spine. And so it's not ironic or coincidence that we have seven main nerve ganglia that correspond to the seven chakras. And um, in the chakra system, their wheels, typically they're shown as wheels uh, that look something like this. So you have seven of them. And you notice that um, they all have different amount of petals. And as you go up, the petals increase. And so the first one starts with two. And, and then the next one is four and, and so on and so forth. And it just so happens that if you add up all the numbers of the petals and you get to uh, the sixth chakra, you end up with the number 144. And then the seventh chakra is called the 1,000 petaled lotus. So here, if you multiply the 144 times the 1,000, uh, it's obvious that you get 144,000. And this is actually in direct reference to um, the Bible when it says, and I'm not exactly quoting it, but when it says that um, during the process of the harvesting of souls or the ascension, 144,000 shall have thine eye, thy eye be single and full of light and shall reach the heavens. And this is actually not referring to 144,000 different people. This is referring to anyone who goes through the chakra system and enlightens themselves and raises their kundalini energy up through their spine. And this is actually the process of ascension that is encoded and talked about heavily in, um, in all ancient scriptures, but it's really heavily encoded in the Bible. Um, then I'm going to do one more little segue here um, that I just think is really neat about the number seven. Um, we have seven visible planets. And uh, of course we have more planets in our solar system, nine or ten depending on your perspective. But um, the seven visible planets uh, regulate a lot of the human body and a lot, of, a lot about man. And primarily the cycles of time and space and the way that we fit in them. And one of the most basics that a lot of people may or may not know or ever think about that I think is neat is that you have you have seven planets. Whoops, sorry about that. And those seven planets are actually uh, where we get our cycles of the week, the seven days of the week. So Sunday, well that one's obvious. It's the day of the sun, the center of our solar system. Uh, Monday is in reference to the moon and in Spanish or Latin it's called lunes which means the moon and then um, Tuesday in Latin is called martis which is obvious that that's Mars Wednesday is uh, Mer Mercolis uh, in Spanish, but in Latin it's spelled, how's it spelled here? It's M-E-R-C-U-R. -E -R. 
Mercur Mercury, which is obviously Mercury in English. Thursday is uh, Jovis, which is Jupiter. Friday is uh, Viernes in Spanish, but in Latin, I believe it's spelled V E N E R I S, which is Venus, the mother goddess. And again, back to Eve, this refers to the female. Obviously, uh, Venus has always been known as, as the female goddess, but um, Venus, if you just uh, put an E in front of it, you have Eve, or even, Evenus, which is a feminine quality. The even numbers in our, our number scale are associated with feminine, and our odd numbers are associated with male. Um, Saturday, well that one's really obvious, that's Saturn. And so you ha there you have it. We've got seven days, not eight, not nine, not ten. We have seven, and um, they're all actually coordinated with the seven visible planets in, in our solar system. So I think if you grow up in Europe and you speak Latin or a Romance language, you, you probably, probably figure this out fairly early in life. But uh, I didn't figure it out until recently. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, another really cool thing, um, before we finish here, is in astrology, this is the symbol of the earth. It's also called the medicine wheel, the, the cross, the crucifixion. Um, it's got a lot of names, the holy cross. Uh, the biblical cross comes from here. And what it really is, is just the, the summer solstice, winter solstice, and the two equinoxes. And this is the symbol of the earth because this is what happens when the sun hits the earth um, throughout the year. And this is where we get in mathematics, we get our basic symbols. A lot of people don't know where our symbols come from that we use every day. But, uh, but this is where we get our plus symbol, addition. And then if you were to rotate this wheel a little bit, like this, that's where we get our multiplication symbol. And then, um, obviously, if you keep going with this, it's pretty simple that we get our subtraction from the horizon, or the equinox, or the equator. And then, uh, last and not least, when you divide, which is uh, basically the yin and yang, the, the light of the sun, the, the dark of the night, the height of summer and the darkness of winter on the top and bottom so we get our division which that's actually talking about division when you divide the equator of the earth you get these different polarities so there you go hope you enjoyed that um, i'll be posting more in the future